So I take the opportunity again to welcome all of you. Uh, it's good to see Teacher Victor, Reverend Johnson, Kahindi, uh, my brother Eric, Pastor Isabella, uh, Eunice Mturi, uh, Rebecca. So all of you uh, feel uh, welcome. Uh, today is another time again. I know it's going to have a very exciting time as we continue to think global, lead local, and transform the world. Uh, remember, we've been saying from the beginning that a better leader is a better life, uh, because leadership uh, is cascaded from the personal life uh, upward. So as we continue to become better in terms of knowledge, in terms of skills, in terms of uh, uh, our, our mindsets, uh, all this is uh, molding us in the three areas that we discussed about, or we are still discussing about the skill set, the heart set, the heart set, and also the mindset. That is the whole person as far as, as a leader is concerned. So a better leader, we believe that is a better life and a better family and a better community and a better nation and a world at, at the end or in large. So we trust that as we continue to uh, engage, uh, we'll continue to experience this transformation in our lives and also in these other uh, domains that we are leading, either at the family level, community level, uh, the organization, wherever you are, uh, we, we, we are trusting God that there will be a shift, there will be a change, there will be increased productivity, performance, and also uh, the way we handle and, 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 and uh, relate with other leaders and the team that we are we are guiding. Uh, last week we had a testimony from one of the cohort four alumni, and I was sharing how they have increased increased their revenue from around three hundred thousand per year to close to one million per year. And he was saying they just did some slight adjustments of, after going through this program, especially in terms of relating to. Uh, personal relationship. Uh, he deals with a security firm and therefore they had to train their security personnel, uh, their management personnel, and they have, it, they have received so many referrals, uh, which has opened avenue for new clients. And I was telling us that was purely an issue of attitude. They really worked around the attitude themselves and also the people that they are working around. So remember, this is what we have been talking about, that uh, the lion's share in leadership, it's an issue of the mindset. And as we continue to uh, grow in terms of purity of our intentions, how pure our intentions, our motive, as we continue to serve. So we trust that we are getting better and uh, we will continue all the way as we walk through. So today we are starting lesson uh, seven. Uh, which is in uh, the level two in our program. And uh, we're getting into more detail in terms of now understanding various concepts of leadership. The first part of this course is more on self-awareness. Uh, just me taking an in-depth analysis of my strength, my giftings, my, my just getting an awareness of the whole person uh, in different perspective. And then from there, I'm able to know where do I need to improve? Where do I need to nurture more? Uh, enhancing my strength and also understanding my weaknesses so that I can see those that are convertible and those that I need just to manage and probably complement uh, with other uh, leaders and other people that I'm working with. So we are now getting into more depth uh, discussions on leadership. So. Uh, please, let's walk together. Uh, we'll be starting from page 35. But before that, before we get into the manual, uh, we are preparing for the 6th of March uh, for our retreat and summit. And I will have some giveaways on that day. Uh, but to get the giveaways, we'll be having some challenges, some leadership challenge in every session. And uh, whoever gets it right will be enrolled or enlisted for the gifting or the, for a gift on that day. So today we also have a challenge 
uh, as we start. And I trust that you are ready. You can, I trust all of you can be able to see my screen. Maybe one person can just indicate if you're able to see my screen. We can see. Ah, good. So we have a, a challenge and I'll give you one minute just to think about this challenge, the leadership challenge for today. Uh, we have discussed about the four C's of a global leader. Actually, there are five, but I will just want someone to mention what are the four C's of a global leader? The four C's of a global leader. And two, the six I's and the one T of leadership, on which the six principles of leadership that we are discussing in this manual are anchored. This was in lesson one. So we discussed the six I's and the one T of leadership. And also we mentioned about the four C's of a global leader. So if you can mention either through the chat or just unmute and mention them, uh, you will be our winner for today's challenge. And I can see already Pastor Isabella, you have unmuted. Please uh, continue. Yeah. Okay, we have the, the, the first one, the five eyes. The five that eyes. Is influence, mm -hmm. inspiration, mm -hmm. integration, mm -hmm. integrity, mm -hmm. impact. One, one more remaining, but but you can uh, go transformation. To the oh, transformation for the T. Sorry. Yeah, so transformation. Yes. The one T is transformation. So you have mentioned the five eyes and the one T. Okay, uh, Pastor Isabella, uh, the four C's. Are you able to mention the four C's of a global leader? Or someone else can take the challenge to mention the four C's. Yes, I can try. Yeah. Uh, we had character, uh, clarity, that is a vision. We had conviction and we had competency. Uh -huh. And, and uh, Eric, about the yes. six eyes, there's one that uh, Pastor Isabella uh, might have missed out. It's intelligence. Intelligence. Wow. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Now I don't know how, how you will share this gift. <laughs> so, uh, uh, will... yes, Eric. We can honor Isabella today. <laughs> so, our winner for today is uh, Pastor Isabella. Uh, Pastor Isabella, let's give a clap to Pastor Isabella. Well done. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you so much, Pastor Isabella. So uh, the, the five Cs, I've added one C. So we're talking about, as uh, Eric has mentioned, competency, very important. Uh, two, clarity. Uh, three, character. Uh, four, we have conviction. And then five is compassion, compassion. Yeah, compassion, a leader must be able to show compassion, show love. Uh, among other items that falls under compassion. And then there are six eyes. The six eyes influence, inspiration, integrity, integration, impact. And the one that always uh, misses out in most cases is intelligence. So those are the six eyes. So as we discuss issues of leadership, these are, uh, we, these are the, our identity, our identity as leaders. Uh, we leave out to demonstrate the six I's and also this, the, four, the five C's of a global leader. So remember this, uh, we'll continue with another challenge relating to the same. Now, uh, these are the five I's of a global leader. Okay. And then uh, these are the six I's and the one T of a, a leader. Now let's move on to lesson seven. So lesson seven, we'll, dis we'll discuss two aspects in lesson seven. One, the three categories of leadership. Uh, this part of, uh, of the lesson is not in your manual, 
but uh, since we'll sh share this uh, PowerPoint at the end, you'll be able to get the content. Uh, but the second part is in the manual. We are, we are still working around also probably a revision of the manual later on, but now we'll just continue to uh, beef it up whenever we feel there is need. So we'll first discuss the three categories of leadership, the three categories of leadership, and then we'll get into the evolu evolution of leadership. It's good to understand the background. And as we study this historical background of leadership, uh, be very watchful uh, in terms of what are some of the key qualities that we feel you need to impress or we need to impress as leaders. Uh, the examples that we look at, some of them will be really giving us a, a, an in-depth understanding of leadership in different dimension. So just watch out. And uh, if you feel something is, is, is uh, standing out, uh, please put it on the chat so that we can be able to share uh, as we continue. So the three, uh, the three categories of leadership, one is political leadership. And uh, this is, this, we are quite familiar with this. It's almost a daily uh, engagement on issues of political. And then uh, we have uh, military leadership. And lastly is religious uh, leadership. So we look at these three, uh, starting with political, uh, political leadership. Just adjust my screen a bit. Okay, so political leadership is a function, uh, not really a position. And uh, political leaders, they have a key role uh, that they serve. Uh, and uh, it's not through a formal authorization. We know our system is a democratic system, but uh, their main role of a political leader involves the mobilization of the political community or the community at large in, uh, in, in issues of formulating a problem, diagnosis, and also political strategies. Yeah, as well as realizing the strategies that they can apply so that to address the political uh, or community challenges. So these are, uh, these are function and uh, that's why they keep on uh, getting new people every five years, that is for Kenya, in the case of Kenya. And uh, the, the, if you have noticed, the political leaders, they normally engage uh, on, on uh, stakeholders engagements in terms of formulating strategies. And those stakeholders engagements, the main role is to be able to uh, maybe identify the uh, problems within the community, challenges within the community, and then be able to uh, agree on uh, political strategies in, in addressing these challenges. So I think this is also important for us as leaders in whatever domain you are serving in. Uh, stakeholder engagement is normally very important. One is for ownership uh, and two is also in terms of prioritizing uh, the issues that have been identified out so that you can know uh, uh, which one comes first and also allocation of resources. So this is the main a role of a political leader. And there are some qualities. There are 10 most important qualities uh, for a good political leader. And these qualities can also apply to us in other domains of, of leadership. So the 10 qualities, and as we look at this quality, just think about which, which one is most wanting, uh, which is most wanting. Which one do you feel they are fulfilling or they, they, they most a majority uh, de demonstrate or dis they are display that quality? One that they are de demonstrating quite well and one that you feel is most wanting, is most wanting. And uh, just share on the chat as we continue. So these are the 10 uh, qualities for a good political leader. One is patriotism. So our leaders, patriotic, uh, especially, we are focusing on political uh, leadership. Two is good education. This can be subjective, depending with the, uh, with, with, the, with the position or the function. Three is honesty. Uh, then we have political professionalism. Uh, the issues of um, ethics also included here. And then charisma, uh, intelligence, responsibility, and then strength of character, and then servanthood or service to the people, 
and bravery. So those are the 10 most expected qualities for a good political leader. Which of this quality do you feel a majority uh, meeting or they fulfill? And which one do you feel is the most wanting in our political, uh, our political arena, our political domain? Yeah, so let me just take one. I can see a, a chart here. Uh, most wanting, uh, which one? Oh, this, this, that is the question. That is the question has been uh, phrased out by Reverend Kahindi. So just look at that. I think you can share as we continue. Uh, which quality is most wanting in our political uh, leaders and which one is well demonstrated? Eric, responsibility, uh, is it most wanting or is demonstrated? I think we can distinguish there. Uh -huh. Responsibility. Most wanted. Most wanted responsibility. Uh -huh. Let me take uh, two more. Two more. And as we also uh, evaluate them, we also think about ourselves also. Uh, most wanting from Rebecca is honesty. Okay. And then uh, Pastor Isabella, service to the people. So those are the most wanting service to the people, servanthood, uh, honesty, and responsibility. Uh, I think I haven't seen uh, anybody who has indicated where the, the ones that they are demonstrating, maybe at a, a certain good level. But also let's think about ourselves of these ones with these qualities, which one are most honesty is most wanting from Victor. Okay, thank you so much. Now, uh, demonstrating charisma. I, I, I agree with you, Eric, charisma. Uh, most of them are very charismatic. Okay, now to us, if you evaluate yourself on these 10 qualities, how will you rate yourself? How will you rate yourself? Uh, which qualities do you feel uh, you, 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 you are demonstrating quite well and which one do you feel are most wanting? So you can just think about that uh, as we continue uh, with the other part of the uh, training. Okay, so let's move on. Let's move on. The second category uh, is uh, military leadership. We'll stay here for a while on this uh, category because there's quite a lot that I want us to pick from military leadership. And uh, for military leadership, it's all about pursuit of excellence. You can't make a, you can't, uh, uh, you can't, you can't fail to be an excellent leader as far as uh, military leadership is concerned. There, there is no room for mistake. There is no room for uh, for trials because sometimes you are in a, a situation where uh, a trial can cost a lot. A single mistake can cost a lot, okay? But uh, for military leadership, the definition that we have uh, on the screen uh, is the art of influencing, one. Uh, remember that is the first I and, and directing men in such a manner to obtain their willing obedience, very important, willing obedience and also respect, confidence and loyal cooperation in order to accomplish the mission, yeah? So uh, this is a very good definition of leadership, uh, both from the military uh, uh, perspective and also from any other perspective of leadership uh, sphere or leadership landscape. So think about it, the art of influencing, yeah? And then giving direction so that too, you're able to obtain willing obedience and also respect and confidence. People must have confidence in you as a leader, and uh, they should also be able to cooperate, uh, loyal cooperation. And uh, why are they doing this? In order to accomplish a mission, okay? So uh, military leadership, again, we can talk, we can uh, discuss it or we can mention uh, it being the process of influencing others to accomplish the mission by one, providing a purpose, two, providing direction, vision, and three, providing motivation. I think this is important uh, for any leader. 
any leader can influence others or can influence the team, but you influence them to accomplish a mission. So there has to be a mission, which is well communicated. And two, there has to be a purpose, which is well communicated. Why are we engaging in this mission? Yeah, so that has to be very clear. You remember the uh, success, we said that success is 80% the why and 20% the how. So when people are able to get clearly the why, then they can be able to work with you. Uh, they can sacrifice even to a higher level. So providing a mission, uh, providing a purpose, and also direction. Where are we going? What are you able to see as a leader? And helping other people also to be able to see what you are seeing and to be able to work together with you. And there also the motivation, uh, providing the motivation. Uh, remember the story we've been discussing about the, the, the Israelites from Egypt to, to Canaan. Yeah, it was very clear. They, they, there was a clear picture of Canaan, a land flowing with milk and honey. Uh, and uh, there, there was motivation. They, are going to, they were going to own that land. They were going to uh, partake something that they were missing uh, in wherever they were. So there, there's a sense of motivation and uh, there's a sense of direction. So remember, this is important. So the objective is to accomplish a mission uh, that is being driven by you as the leader. Some factors of leadership, uh, as far as military leadership is concerned, there is one, the lead or the team members, the leader, the situation and communication. So this is the landscape of leadership. In every leadership space, you will have this, uh, this, this factors. The factor of the team, you as the leader or the leader, or whoever is the leader, and then the situation. This the situation we can talk about probably the mission and also communication. Communication is key, and that's why we'll be focusing on a whole topic uh, just to address the issue of communication. There are some principles that are very relevant also in any other uh, sphere of leadership that we can uh, benchmark from military leadership. Uh, the first principle is that uh, know yourself and seek self improvement. So in military leadership, it's a principle that as a leader, you need to understand yourself, the awareness that you've been talking about, and also continuous, continuously seek self-improvement. Be technically and tactically proficient. Uh, you remember the soft skills, the hard skills. So technical skills or technically, you're talking about hard skill in whatever domain. It might be professional uh, domain, you are a profession, in a particular area, so technically uh, you're fit, and then tactically in terms of strategy, you're strategic, yeah. And then number three, seek responsibility and take responsibility for your actions. So accountability there and responsibility. Make sound and timely decisions. Very important principle. Uh, set the example, be the role model. Know your soldier and look out for their welfare. Uh, keep your subordinate informed communication, develop a sense of responsibility in your subordinates, and then ensure that the task is understood, supervised and accomplished. Yeah, very, very important also uh, a principle uh, in terms of ensuring that as you assign the task, have they understood the task and then you supervise and uh, also ensure that it's accomplished. Build the team build the team. Team formation is very, very important uh, when it comes to uh, leadership. And then employ your unit in accordance with its capability. So these are some of the principles of leadership based on military uh, leadership. And I'm sure we can be able to benchmark a few uh, from this. There are some traits, leadership traits. One is knowledge, very important. You need to be knowledgeable uh, as a leader, uh, courage, need to take initiative, uh, decisive, tact, justice, dependability, and then uh, bearing, endurance, We're talking about resilience, uh, how elastic are you, uh, how are you able to bounce back, how are you able to keep pace, how are you able to stretch and still be able to keep moving on. And then unselfishness, uh, integrity, uh, loyal, sound judgment, among others. So, uh, 
military leadership, there's so much that we can be able to tap to, uh, from this category of leadership. And uh, I encourage you just to spend some time also maybe to dig more. I know we've given you just a highlight and uh, you can take some time just to dig deeper uh, to understand uh, this category of leadership. The last one is religious leadership. Yeah, and uh, the role of religious le uh, leader, they give people the hope, guidance and courage they need to stay strong in their faith. So these are very important qualities of a religious leader because most of these or some of these courages, uh, qualities are intrinsic. So as a, a religious leader, I think the focus is to deal with the inner man, the inner man, and that is the real person uh, that uh, we can influence to be able to influence the outer man. And every time I have a discussion with the religious people, I tell them they're very important because they deal with the inner man. Uh, and that's the only way you can change a person. So for religious leaders, they give people the hope uh, during COVID uh, era and, and as we continue through the same era, hope has been very, very important. Yeah, so give hope and also provide guidance and courage so that they can be able to keep or remain strong in faith. So uh, religious leaders, they invest in the growth and development of the followers, empowering them to become what God has gifted them to be. So the issue is you're providing a platform as a spiritual leader for the people to be able to nurture whatever they possess, whatever God has deposited in them. You're providing that environment just to invest uh, in them, to help them grow, uh, develop whatever they have so that they can be able to serve it out and uh, manifest it. So you empower them to own and uh, implement the mission, either the mission of the organization or the mission of the entity, but also you are helping them to accomplish their own mission in life. As religious leadership will focus on a few key aspects. One is shepherd leadership, servant leadership, humility, relationships, and stewardship. Relationships is very important because this is more of a relational, relational. It's not about uh, uh, positional leadership here yeah. because for religious leadership, uh, these are a, a, willing, a willing collaboration. They are in the, if you look at maybe the corporate or the public sector, uh, there is more of uh, positional leadership there. There is an authority that comes with a position. But when it comes to religious leadership, it's more of relational. People will follow you willingly and they can leave you. So it's more of building the relationship to be able to influence the people to work together with you. So those are the three categories of leadership uh, that we, we just felt we need to benchmark on those three areas or three categories, be able to pick a few qualities uh, that will be able to enhance our understanding of leadership at the same time also be able to filter through a few qualities that we feel we need to, uh, to onboard uh, so that we continue becoming better uh, leaders. So uh, please feel free to continue sharing your takeaway as we move on to uh, part B of this lesson. And uh, this one is on uh, page 37, page 37, uh, 35, sorry, page 35. Evolution of leadership. Leadership has evolved uh, for a long time, for centuries. It's a topic that has been discussed and we continue to discuss it. And uh, today we just want to look at the journey of leadership. And uh, we look at the theories, the leadership theories, uh, just 10 of them. I'm sure you, when you are undertaking your book review, you came across the theories. So we look at the great man theory, just to give us an understanding where has this, how has this topic evolved? And what are some of the key qualities that each of this th theory tries to communicate or, or tries to, uh, uh, to add in terms of understanding uh, leadership. So great man theory, we have the trait theory, all the way uh, transformational leadership, 
and now we are talking about integrated uh, leader manager among others that are still coming on board so let's walk through together and i will start with the great the great man theory so on page uh, 35 there is a blank number 1 number 1 is is uh, is a blank so you fill that blank with the great man theory and uh, this one was proposed by some historian or one of the historian is thomas uh, thomas and uh, the year is around 1840 and according to this theory what is believe about leadership or what was he proposing in terms of uh, leadership he proposed that or he his argument is that leadership or people who lead are born leaders yeah it says that leaders are born not made leaders are born not made that is his argument great leaders will arise when there's a great need and they are born natural leaders who have some inbuilt qualities of leadership that usher them to the position of leadership. So basically, uh, the great man theory uh, talks about or uh, argues or discusses or proposes that leaders are born, not made, in simple word. That is what this theory uh, proposed. The second theory is the trait theory of leadership. This one was proposed by still Thomas and also uh, Francis in mid 1800. What does it say? Great leaders are born, not made. Yeah. There are some similarity with the first one. And then uh, leaders are born with certain uh, character traits or qualities. Since certain traits are associated with the leadership. So if you see certain traits or certain qualities in a person, then that person uh, is a leader. And uh, this theory also assumes that if you could identify people with the correct traits, you will be able to identify leaders or individual with the leadership potential. So that's why it's uh, referred to as the trait, because it's the issue of identifying the trait and uh, those traits that are associated with leaders. So if anybody possesses those traits, you will be able to tell out that that person is, is a leader. Among the traits are traits like charisma, among others. And then the skill theory. Uh, this is uh, by Robert Katz, 1955. To be a leader, according to this theory, you need technical skills in your domain, people skill, and also conceptual skills. And that is the ability to be able to see the big picture and think strategically. Yeah, I think this is, this this is quite uh, relevant uh, as we look at it keenly and it also fits in terms of what we have been discussing uh, in terms of personal development so technical skills that hard skills in your domain to people skills uh, how to relate how to communicate how to build relationship and also conceptual skills how to be able to visualize and uh, to be able to have a bigger picture uh, thinking that is the skills theory. And then now uh, we have the style theory of leadership uh, by, uh, by Kurt Lewin, 1939. And the theory focuses on styles such as democratic, uh, participatory leadership, uh, among others. There are different other styles of leadership. So such leaders are people friendly, but they insist on performance. So style theory, basically talks about different styles of leadership, democratic, participatory, collaborative, uh, among many other styles of leadership. And then we have situational leadership theory. Uh, that is uh, number what? We are on which number now? It'll be number five now. Number five. So number five, Situational leadership. I will spend just some few minutes here, uh, and I'll also expand this on a few other, one more slides. So situational leadership theory. 
this one was proposed by Paul and uh, Blankert, 1969. The theory argues that there is no one model that fits all situations. So think about it. No one model that fits all situations. So certain styles and traits fit in one situation, but not in another. The leader must therefore adapt to the situation. So the key word when it comes to situational leadership is the issue of adaptability. Having the same leader leading in different situation, but having the capacity to be able to adapt. And uh, let's relate this to the contingency theory because contingency theory talks about pick the right leader for the situation rather than leader adapting to the situation. And uh, effective leadership is contingent on matching the leader styles to the, to the setting. So th these are two theories. Uh, one talks about let the leader adapt. The other one talks about the contingency theory talks about Let's have the right person or select different leaders according to the situation. Okay, so I think I'll want you to just think about this in your uh, group, uh, your, your rooms, and uh, let's engage on this more, especially on these two theories among the others. So as we look at the situation of leadership, uh, there, are, there are leadership styles under situation of leadership. Yeah, there are four primary leadership styles. The first style is telling, S1, telling. In this leadership style, the leader tells people what to do and how to do it. And then the second leadership style when it comes to situation leadership is a selling. This style involves more of back and forth between the leader and followers. So you sell, as a leader, you sell the ideas, and a message to get group members or the team members to be able to buy into the process. And then the third category, the third style is participating, the S3. And uh, this one is more of uh, the leader offers less direction and allows members or the team members to be able to take more active role in coming up with ideas and making decisions. And then the last one is, uh, uh, delegating and uh, when it comes to delegating uh, is characterized by a less involvement it's a hands-off approach to leadership so the team members they tend to take most of the leadership decisions and most of the responsibility for what happens so situational leadership theory or the uh, the, uh, the station leadership theory has uh, four primary leadership styles telling selling participating and delegation. And then we can be able to match these styles with the maturity level. So you assign or you choose the style depending with the maturity level of the people that you are leading. For example, telling uh, can apply or you can apply telling to people of maturity level one. And maturity level one, we are talking about a situation where group members, maybe they lack knowledge, skills, and also the willingness to complete the task. So there you have to tell as a leader. Two, selling. This will work in maturity level two, where group members are willing, enthusiastic, but they lack the ability. So there you, you can sell the idea. And then uh, uh, maturity level three, group members have the skills and the capacity to complete the task, but are unwilling to take responsibility then there you need to engage uh, the style of uh, participatory. And then the last one, delegation, you apply where the maturity level for the members is, uh, you have uh, members who are highly skilled and also the willingness to be able to take the task to completion. There, then there you can be able to apply the delegation the delegation leadership style. So uh, this, these are important uh, just to reflect on this uh, so that you can be able to make the right choice. Now, uh, let's go back to the, the next theory, transactional leadership by Max Weber, 1980s. 
people follow a leader based on incentives in place. So the role of the leader is to find the right mix of rewards and sanctions, and then to be able just to monitor how people are performing. So you, you apply uh, sanctions and rewards uh, based, on the, based on the transaction or based on the, uh, the engagement. Uh, for government, uh, government employees, there's what we call the performance contracting system. So if you perform well, there is a, a reward. If you don't perform, there are sanctions. So we engage based on the transaction. We, we sign a contract uh, and then we monitor how you are able to perform based on that contract. And then as we move on, we are coming closer. Uh, transformational leadership, that this is now 1978 by James uh, Burns. It focuses on cultivating followership. You cultivate followership rather than paying for it on sanctions or, and rewards or even punishing non-compliance. So it's an issue of cultivating. And for him, uh, he, he, according to this theory, transformational leadership is actually based on, or is a process where leaders, they interact with their followers. And again, very important, they are able to inspire them to do what? To advance together. So the key word here is inspiration. Transformational leadership is anchored on inspiration, cultivating followership, okay? And then uh, we have leader member exchange theory. Uh, basically this focuses on a leader's success is based on a fair exchange, having a fair exchange between the leader and the followers. So it's comprised of three dimension. One is mutual respect of each other's capabilities. Two, deepening sense of reciprocal trust. And three, a strong sense of, of obligation to one another in the working relationship. Yeah, so this is more of a, a trust system, a reciprocal trust, uh, and uh, it's more of an exchange between the leader and the, and the member, okay? And then we have servant leadership, servant leadership. Uh, servant leadership, as much as we are talking about this uh, leadership style in 1970s by Robert, uh, by Robert Greenf Greenleaf. This, this is more of a timeless concept. It's a, an approach that people have used for centuries. It was there uh, more than 2000 years ago. It's, it's a system or a, a theory that has worked and been applied for a long time. That's why we are talking about it being a timeless concept. And it focuses on a servant leader being a servant first, a leader second. So I serve first, and then I transition to be a leader based on my, my service. And it focuses on serving rather than being served. Uh, you can recall those words in the Bible uh, where Jesus talked about, I came to serve, not to be served. And such a leader will create an environment of trust and cooperation reciprocal service, and also a higher performance, which will, will lead to a higher performance. So people will follow, or people follow a servant leader out of love and gratitude, rather than compassion or fear. And as I've mentioned, the best model is what? Is who is Jesus Christ. So such leaders, they lead through inspirational, uh, not manipulation or even control. They inspire. Jesus was able to inspire the followers. Uh, yeah, and the, through that inspiration, they were able to embark on a higher calling in life. Uh, and they, and they, they were able to follow him. Some left their families, some they left their, farm, their businesses, and they followed him. They followed him. He was able to influence them because this is someone who came to serve, not to be served. Okay. And then we have a global leader. A leader who thinks global leads local for global transformation. This is our own. So as a global leader, we are thinking global. Uh, we are leading local. We are taking action wherever we are. And uh, we are leading for global transformation. It's a mix of transformational, ambidextrous, servant, and purpose-driven uh, leadership qualities. 
Yeah, so the only aspect that I've not mentioned here is ambidextrous, and that is what I want to conclude with. So ambidextrous leadership, uh, the word ambidexterity talks about the ability to use the left and the right hand equally. Uh, it's a Latin word, which means both, which means both. So ambidextrous leadership style, uh, possesses or discusses some aspects of a leader who is able to focus on two approaches, the two approaches. And two approaches uh, are take different dimension. The first dimension is a leader is able to focus on a, a, a dual focused leadership approach that works towards what is best for individuals and what is best for the organization as a whole simultaneously. So the two, the two arm here is uh, you as a leader or me as a leader, I'm able to, make, to make sure that we are able to take the interest, to take into consideration the interest of the organization. At the same time, we are focusing on how do we take care of the interest of the individual. So there is alignment, there is alignment. And then the second aspect, ambidextral leadership, will also explore new opportunities while exploiting existing ones. So an ambidextrous leader will explore new opportunities, but at the same time, will exploit, will maximize the existing opportunities. Those are the two arms, the two arms. And then lastly, uh, such a leader will explore long-term long goals, while at the same time, is able to serve the short-term goals. So there's a mix in terms of uh, even the personnel. Uh, do we have managers who are able to take care of the short term who are able to manage the day-to-day -day operation and also the leaders who are able to focus on the long term uh, the long term uh, goals so ambidextrous leadership focuses on the two uh, the two arms being able to use the two arms and the two arms means taking care of the organization's needs and taking care of the individual needs it also means uh, exploring new opportunities while exploiting existing opportunities it also means we need to remain focused on long-term goals, but at the same time, we continue to serve, uh, taking care of the short-term goals. So those are the, the theories uh, of leadership. Uh, I trust that as you think through, as you reflect through, as you revise uh, this lesson, you will be able to uh, just look through, especially for the qualities and see where do we enhance uh, our capacity as a leader. We are all at different domains, and I'm sure all of us, we are, we are able to look at this content from different perspective and we're able to filter through what we feel we should take on board and uh, what we need to embrace to become better. So our challenge, leadership challenge for lesson seven, which theory best describes your leadership style? It might be one, it might be different theories uh, that describes your leadership style or your leadership type. Uh, so you need to identify some strategies that you need to employ to transition uh, to a global leader or even to a purpose-driven leader, or even just advance your leadership uh, skills or style to a higher level. From where you are, I'm sure there is always the next level that we are all aspiring to be. We normally say that our goal is not to become the best, but to become better. Uh, as leaders. So uh, that brings us to the end of uh, lesson seven. Lesson seven. So we'll take a break. And uh, as we take this break, uh, we'll uh, get into our groups just for 10 minutes, just to be able to discuss about the book review. And at the same time, you can also discuss what we have shared today, the content we have shared today. Uh, uh, and again, as we do that, uh, please filter through identify just probably three uh, issues that you may want to share in the plenary uh, once we come back. So let me create the groups and then we'll be able to move uh, to the groups. Uh, you can take a, a minute just to freshen up. Maybe you need to stretch up a bit. Uh, please uh, freshen up for one minute and then we'll be able to continue. Okay, I'm going to talk about the book review. 
in chapter one, sorry, in chapter two, we have discussed that true leadership is a mentality because leadership has been said to be 80% attitude and 20% aptitude. Uh, we also said that uh, everyone has a leadership potential within them, but the distinguishing factor is understanding and manifesting that leadership potential. We came to chapter seven, uh, and we said that uh, man is born with leadership potential. I think that's a repetition again, but this leadership requires the right environment to manifest. Uh, we said that leadership, we are born with leadership potential and the capacity to develop that potential. We looked at the example of David and Goliath, where Goliath was used to usher David to leadership by solving a problem for the problem for the Israelites. Goliath was the problem in this case. David was ushered into leadership. Uh, another thing now, we went to the last chapter on servant leadership. Here we say the servant leadership is focused on leading by service and not controlling or oppressing others. And we say that servant leaders see problems as opportunities to serve. Finally, we say that anyone can be great by serving, as reminded to us by Jesus, Matthew 20, 25 to 27. And he said, the one who wants to be the greatest must be the servant to all. Thank you. Eric will pick up the rest. All right. Uh, I, I will touch on, uh, on uh, today's discussions briefly. Uh, I, I think uh, one of the things that has come out that uh, Jesus uh, did his ministry with a lot of excellence. And when we look at the... Uh, uh, the military uh, type of leadership that is in pursuit of excellence. We can also relate to the many countries that we have seen that we don't advocate for where the military has taken, uh, you know, some kind of or leadership. And we've seen sometimes things in the right direction. And we have also seen a lot of uh, uh, leadership uh, styles play out in our country that I think this class today has opened our eyes to. Like for example, uh, the great man theory, if you go to the politics in the village, they believe if your father was a leader, the son must definitely be a leader. And many times those people end up getting elected, uh, even today. And then we also uh, had an interest in studying on situational leadership. I remember I think during Kibaki's time, most of his time he had delegated his authority to people who are able. Uh, <clears throat> then also, uh, when we look at uh, uh, transformation leadership, and be text as leadership, is what that uh, is applicable to most organizations today. That uh, what is, what is good for the employee is good for the organization. Yes, thank you. Thank you. Wow! Thank you, uh, Eric and uh, Eunice. Uh, let's appreciate that team. Thank you so much for the excellent work. Uh, in pursuit of excellence, you've really done it, done it quite well. Yeah, so let's move on to room two and then we'll just share the comments, both comments together. Uh, group two or room two, uh, Pastor Isabella and Victor. So whoever is presenting, please proceed. Uh, room two. Okay, good evening. Yeah, good evening, Victor. Please proceed. Yeah, for us, we are just going to have a review on what we have learned today, especially from the uh, military leadership. From military, we have we seen that. It is all about the excellence, and uh, there is no room for trials. For, from the environment, uh, in many many organizations, you find that the leaders are expected to be perfect, 
and excellent with their work. And then from this one, we have seen some factors of leadership. These factors that were, the, the, there must be a leader, the lead, the situation, and then the communication, which is more important. But you find a, in most situations, leaders fail because of miscommunication or interruption in communication. So we are going also to review about the principles of leadership. Leaders should know themselves and then seek to have the self-improvement for you to be a good leader. Another, another principle, it is uh, being technical and tactical. It has to be more tactful and also have the required skills. A leader should also build the team. Those are some of the few factors that you looked at. And then you have the leadership traits. A leader has to be knowledgeable, must have the necessary knowledge, courage. Yes, a leader must be courageous because leaders face different situations in their different areas. Endurance, we have endurance. Integrity, integrity. Leaders should be people of integrity and they should not mani mani manipulated by any situation. Also sound judgment is another leadership trait that is very important important to to leaders and then loyal loyalty these are people who are supposed to be trusted maybe by the people they are leading and the groups thank you okay uh Room two, Professor Isabella and Victor, let's uh, appreciate them. Thank you for the good work. Yeah, I think uh, let's keep on digesting more and more. My, my observation or my takeaway is that uh, as you review the book, keep in mind some of the uh, outstanding points that you may want to discuss during the uh, breakout sessions. So that when you get into the breakout session, it becomes very easy. You have already highlighted some of the issues that you want to engage on. Because of time, I won't uh, recap what you have shared, but I just want to mention what uh, Eunice has mentioned, that anyone can be great because anyone can serve. So we serve our way to greatness. And I think that is very important uh, as a reminder to all of us that the only channel to greatness is to keep on serving. The only channel to building a legacy is to keep on serving so that we can be able to transform and impact the people that uh, God has instructed and uh, entrusted to us. We talked about stewardship. Uh, at the end of it all, we'll say we were good steward of uh, the people that God entrusted us to. So I just want to pause there so that we can move on because of time. Today we want to try so that we don't extend that much. And uh, I'll want to hand over uh, to Reverend Kahindi who will take us through lesson eight. Karib Reverend. Santi Sana Chairman. Good evening leaders. Leaders, if you can uh, see my screen, just uh, Good evening. unmute and say yes. Yes. Great. Thanks, Eunice. Anybody else? Yes. Great, Victor. Somebody else looking for two more?
Oh, well, my class has only two. Oh, well, my yes. class. Yes, Pastor Rosina, yes. thank you. Yes, Pastor Rosina. Uh, I'll have I'll have to take a tally. Eric, can you see my screen? Eric is not there. Okay. So in lesson number eight, we are dealing with leadership development phases. Leadership development phases. And uh, Since you can see my slides, let me just touch on that. And there is a book in the book, Authentic Leadership Guide by Bill George states that leadership is not something you are born with. Leadership doesn't mean that, uh, you know, there's this uh, uh, school of thought that when your father was a leader, then you can be a leader. When your grandpa was a leader, you can be a leader. Now, here in this book, that's, this is another school of thought. You can be the son of a nobody, the grandson of a nobody from nowhere, and yet raised to leadership and be a good leader. A good example in the Bible is Gideon. So leadership is not something that you are born with. However, leadership requires constant self-development and growth. So leadership is a journey with three distinct phases. And phase number one is preparing for leadership. So you need to prepare yourself for leadership. Number two is the actual leading. And phase number three is giving back. So, you may not have been born a leader, but you can prepare yourself for leadership and then you can take over leadership and then eventually the third phase in the leadership development is giving back. An authentic leader, if you can see my chart on the right, authentic, an authentic leader must have purpose which will give him passion your purpose and passion are inseparable. And then you must have values which you shall exhibit through your behavior. These values are the ones that will put you and make you successful because they guide your behavior. Then you must have relationship which gives you connectedness. As you know, your network is your net worth. So even in this, because in this master class, as we are learning, we need to get to know each other. We network more because that increases your net worth. An authentic leader should have self-discipline to do what is right and you do it with consistency. Doing right, the right thing once, like let's say studying. If you study very well today and you do it overnight and you say for the rest of your life you're okay, then you can't reach anywhere. But keeping consistency, even if you take two hours study, but consistently every day, you will go far. And then authentic leader leads with, with, has, with his heart because he is compassionate, okay? He has compassion. And when we were being told about the four C's, there was a fifth C, and here it is. So the three phases of leadership development, which I've mentioned there, have this phase number one, and from my graph, I don't know, can you see my mouse there? Can somebody see my mouse? Yes, Rev, we can yes, see. Yes, yes. Uh, okay, good, good. So phase number one is preparing for leadership, and during this phase, or preparing for leadership. That's where you have the character formation. You learn through the rubbing against the world and the people around there. So in this leadership journey, you prepare for that leadership through character development and self-leadership. And then first number two is now stepping up to lead. 
That's where you begin. You step up, you take initiatives, and you embrace new challenges so that now you can lead. And immediately you take that leadership because you have been trained and you have observed others leading well, you will find you go through what you call crucibles. Things become kind of tough and it's not as easy as it seemed when somebody else was doing it. However, if there is consistency in it and perseverance, that is resilience, the power to bounce back, you'll find you will raise and grow to the peak of leadership. And then first number three now, when you have reached the peak of leadership, in first number three, it's generativity. This is where you give back your wisdom, you train, you mentor others. So in the final part of leadership journey, you start seeking opportunities to spread your leadership wisdom to others and give back to the community. Because now you have learned a lot, you have acquired a lot, and you are giving back to the community. So an analogy of the faces of a flight can mirror the different stages in leadership development. You can see my diagram there, uh, the different stages in a flight. And the first one, behind the scenes, what the people do is there's flight planning, they prepare. Then there's that push back and taxing before you take off. Now all that can be mirrored to the preparing fit. That's character formation, learning. And then now you take off, that is stepping up to lead. And you raise, or the plane raise until it reaches its peak. When it reaches its flight height, it maintains it there and then it cruises. Uh, they have different heights, domestic flights and uh, overseas flight normally have different heights of flights for security reasons or for safety reasons. So you reach your peak of leadership and then somewhere later on in life, you begin descending as the flight descends, approaches the, the airstrip or runway and it lands. That is giving back wisdom. It can be uh, seen as or it rests the giving back of wisdom and knowledge of a leader who has begun, flew to his highest his leadership peak, and then is landing, giving back. All through, there is the foundation here, which is mentorship and then succession. You need a mentor. You need to be mentored throughout this process, and you need to take people with you that you will mentor. Remember, you cannot be successful if you have no successor. For you to be successful, you must have a successor, okay? And maybe before I go on, may you just go to the chat and say, where are you in your life currently? What stage are you of this flight? Are you still on your planning stage or taxing in the pushback or taking off? Or are you leading at your peak? Or are you descending? Or are you landing? Just go to the chat and just tell me your stage. I want to see where my people are so that I can know where they are going. So please quickly just touch to the chat and write what, what stage you are in. Eric is pushing back. Yes, it needs, needs that energy to get flowing on the ground. And uh, Victor is on the planning. You is planning. And uh, if I can get one more, if I can get one more. Great. Victor planning. Now, it is good for you to understand yourself because before you know where you are, you cannot even know what to do and where to go. So over here, one thing I will say, throughout the flight of a plane, there is a lot of energy required. 
before this plane takes over, it must achieve a certain speed, depending on the size of the plane and uh, the wind uh, power uh, when it's flowing against it. Sometimes they have to reach a speed of 500 kilometers per hour before they can take off. So you need a lot of energy. While you are raising up against gravity, you need a lot of energy. When you are up there for the plane to maintain its height, it requires a lot of energy. While landing, you know, it is landing but must reduce its speed. So a lot of energy. My point is this, across this leadership journey, you will require to exact a lot of energy. So leadership is not an easy thing. You will use fuel, you will lose all the knowledge, then the more knowledge you have, the better. But it's not for the lazy. So brace yourself up and you are up to the task. Just be ready. Okay, let's move on. There are essentially three cornerstones of leadership development. And the first cornerstone is character formation, self-leadership. Self-leadership is the first, is the first cornerstone. So being authentic and true to yourself and your values, self-awareness and identity, you must be aware of, your, of yourself, of your strength, of your weaknesses and uh, your limits. This forms the foundation of leadership. It determines sustainability and the stability of the rest of the faces. Before you can take lead of yourself, as Mandela said, before, um, I could lead myself, I could not lead people. So before you can take lead of yourself, take control of yourself, you cannot lead others. And then cornerstone number two is leading through conviction. Doing the right thing based on principles and moral forces. This is, you know, this is what is the right thing. But for you to maximize influence and get inspiration and make an impact, you must be convicted. In other words, some other words use this, you must be sold out to the cause. You know, when you say now it is this or nothing else, you are convicted, then it's easier to influence others and inspire others and you will for sure make an impact. Uh, I think I'll mention that one again. Third cornerstone is generativity, thinking generativity. This is thinking of giving back the knowledge, skills, and expertise. You transfer it back to the young generation or to other people, not necessarily about people who are younger than you. Sometimes you can mentor somebody who is older than you. You can learn something from somebody who is younger than you you pass on the baton so that after you have left, you don't go with all the knowledge. It is said the grave is the richest place because most good ideas, a lot of knowledge is buried in there. It is a pity for you to have a lot of knowledge and go with it to the grave without sharing it. After all, knowledge becomes better when shared. Okay, let's go to levels of leadership. Now, based on the selfleadership.com, there are four levels of leadership. And the first one is personal leadership. At uh, this one, uh, you have to be aware of your personal strengths and traits. You have to have the ability to lead and manage oneself in becoming a highly effective person. You must lead yourself to be able to do things that will make you achieve highly without being pushed, that's personal leadership. Then level number two is emerging leadership. And uh, the fundamental leadership skills here are required to lead and manage individuals in a team. So you become a team leader. You have a few people under you that you are leading. And then level number three is a team leader or team leadership. That is when you are becoming a leader of leaders. And uh, fourth, for this business leadership. And uh, we can think of a business, a big business like uh, the bank, KCB Bank, for instance, it has different departments and different divisions and different branches. And if you are leading that business, then you find you have a lot of functions or different functions, as well as people 
whom you need to, uh, to lead to achieve the goals of the business. So the principle of self-leadership, if you cannot lead yourself, you will never be able to lead others. Self-leadership is foundational uh, form of leadership. And this is a leadership that is inside out. It comes from you, from within you to lead you. So it has that leadership, that inside out leadership approach. And it is more intentional and it's influential and impactful first to yourself, okay? And there is a, a second big word here. This is achieved by developing self-awareness, self-confidence and self-efficacy. Uh, we shall come back to that self-efficacy. It is the second big word. I hope you remember, you have learned about ambidextrity. Do you remember ambidextrous, ambidextrity? Does anybody remember? Yes. Yes, what did it mean? A dual focus. Ambidextrity. Yes. Able to use both mm -hmm. right and left hand. Correct, correct. The ability to use both right and left hand. Now I said we shall come to the second one, which I mentioned. But before that, let's go to the let's go on with the levels of leadership. So we have done levels of leadership. Now here there's another one, which again states of four levels of leadership. And the first one is personal leadership, which we came across the other side. And then there is a skip of one here. We go to team leadership, which you have seen the other side, and the business leadership, which you've seen from the previous slide, and another one which we have not seen. So we can say there are a total of five. The first one being personal leadership, as is seen in this screen and this other screen here. And then second one comes emerging leadership. Then third one, team leadership. Fourth one, business leadership. And fifth one, strategic leadership. Now, strategic leadership is the ability to influence others, to volunteer, to voluntarily make decisions that will enhance the prosperity of an organization's long term while maintaining that short term financial stability. So, strategic leadership is actually that ambidextrity in application, whereby you are mobilizing these people, you influence them so they can pursue that long-term success while maintaining the short-term financial stability. Strategic leadership refers to the manager's potential to express a strategic vision for the organization or a part of the organization and to motivate, persuade every other person to pursue and acquire that vision. So here there are, there are, there are some things which are named here when you're talking of strategic leadership, one of them is the having of a vision and then that communication of that. We shall have a session on vision, we shall have a session on communication. So just remember this and we'll go deeper into the visions and the, and the uh, communication, okay? Chairman, well, he was, actually I said it, is it once or twice? And he said leadership pyramid actually begin from below there. And the first one is leading self. And this one is guided by your values, your beliefs, and your principles. As a leader, you must have principles, you must have values, you must have beliefs. There are some things that you stand for, those are your principles. There are some things that you will not do as a matter of principle. And, uh, Maturity is the ability to say no to some things sometimes. You cannot just do everything that comes your way. No, there are some things that you say, this is for me. And this, I just cannot do that. It's against my principles, personal principles, okay? And then stage number two is leading others. And this one you do through positive influence. After you have led yourself through beliefs, 
virtues and following your principles, now you can, you can positively influence others and others will follow you, so you lead them. And thirdly is the leading of leaders, which is through empowerment now. The people that have come to you, you empower them, they become leaders too. So you become a leader and below you are leaders who are leading others because you empower them. And uh, this is what we are longing to have, leading movements. That's through transforming commission and having a cause that we are sold to, okay? And uh, on my right, there are examples here of people who have achieved that much and those steps. You can see the photos which are there. Just tell me one face that you can recognize on the three photos. Who knows the first one here? Or just name anybody that you can recognize there. No one you can identify? I can. Mandela. Ma Mandela, yes. Hello. Yeah. Another one? Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. Mother Teresa. Yes, go on, Victor. And the third one, can anybody identify? Yes, Eunice. Martin Luther Jr. Great. Now, when you hear Mandela, what comes to your mind? When you hear Mandela, what comes to your mind? By the way, have you, have you people met any of these people? Has any of you met Mandela, Mother Teresa, or uh, Martin Luther King Jr.? No. 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 When did Martin Luther King Jr. die? Who was alive at that time? In our midst? Yes, Victor, you are there. Yeah, I've been left alone. Eunice, were you there when Martin Luther King Jr. was giving his speech, powerful speeches? No, I was not there, but I've read a lot about him. Okay, okay. And had uh, had a record excerpt of, of part of the speeches he gave. The line is breaking. The line is breaking. There's some noise behind there. So what what is it that comes to your mind when you hear Martin Luther what King is it Jr.? What comes to your mind when you hear Martin Luther King Jr.? The movement that he began of liberating people so that yes. there will be equality in society, yes. especially for the blacks in, in America. Yes, fighting for the rights of black American for equality. And when you hear Mother Teresa, is Pastor Isabella, are you there still? Sorry? When you hear Mother Teresa, what Hello. comes to hey. mind? Um, she is, she, I, I know she was there assisting the Nindi and the poor. Okay. Great, great. Did Mother Teresa have children? No. No. Okay. Yet she's a mother. Now, when you hear Nelson Mandela, what strikes you? Selfless leadership. Okay. Now, you see, all these people, actually, uh, we may not have come into contact with them. We may not have even lived in their time but they achieved something that the world will talk about them for many, many years. I'm sure we shall leave the world while it is still remembering them. And why, for you to achieve that, because these were leaders of movements, and how do you lead, how do you become a leader of a movement? First, you become a disciple, a student, a follower, and then you grow to leadership, and then you have a cause in life, you are sold into a certain mission, and as you pursue it with conviction, eventually it grows to be a movement, which is unstoppable. Even you cannot stop it. We can just take an example of Mandela. In the many years that he was there, 27 years he was in jail, in prison. And imagine he must have at one point maybe regretted and said, maybe I should just forget about it. 
the white men tried to bribe him, give him whatever was needed, but he could not now stop the movement because he had the movement had reached a stage that now even himself could not have stopped. And it just goes discipleship, then leadership, then a mission, then it becomes a movement. Okay. So we need to be sold to the thing. And uh, let me quickly look at uh, the characters and the qualities of self-leadership. Our, our time is uh, running quickly. These ones are in our books. So we shall just scamper through them in, uh, from page 42, they're there. So we just scamper through them. And um, self-leadership is the foundation of any leadership development, we discover that. Self-leadership is the process by which you influence yourself to achieve your own objectives, which are linked to your own vision. So have a vision, have objectives, and then pursue them. The self-leadership is based on, on intentional choices. You need to be intentional about what you want to do so that you can achieve what you have, what you, you, you intend to do. And self-leadership, these are people who are self-motivated and they're intrinsically motivated. Their motivation is from within. They are not motivated by things that are outside there, but from within, they know this is what they want to achieve. So that motivates them. They're not motivated by money. It's not by the pay, no. So self-leadership develops autonomy. That is ownership of choice, which leads to greater responsibility and accountability. Self-leadership is modeling leadership in our health. That means you take good care of your own body, of your own health, you are in charge. You cannot just eat anything and expect to be, to be something. No, if you eat anything, you will eventually become anything. You need to demonstrate leadership in your family. You need to demonstrate or reflect leadership around your finances and uh, living leadership within the organization and communities. I expect as a global leader, somebody you should be purpose driven. So even if you are employed, you need to lead yourself in that, in that environment of employment. But it should not be the person who needs to be pushed. So as you go through this course, change tact. Wherever you are working, let everybody see that actually you are leading yourself. Know what is supposed to be done and you do it. Self-leaders constantly develop self-awareness, constantly self-awareness. We need to do self-awareness through and through, always. You have to be self-confident and as long as you are doing the right thing, you need you, you will be confident. And uh, eventually, self-belief. Now, this self-belief is what you are calling self-efficacy. Okay. I think I'll have to scamper on. So three things here: self-awareness, self-confidence, and uh, the antidote for confidence is action. Opposite of self-confidence is fear. Antidote for that, action. When you take action, then you become more confident. Confidence comes from knowing your strength, your ability. As we take action and develop skills, we become more and more confident. Now, self-efficacy, the second big word that I've been mentioning, is the belief that whatever comes your way, you will be able to handle it that you can take feedback, you can accept the feedback, you can adjust, you can advance, but after all is said and done, you will have some creativity and innovativity, but you will get it done. That, that belief in yourself that you can accomplish it is what we call self-efficacy, okay? Lastly, and this is my last slide, and if you haven't gotten anything else, I want you to get this. Robin Sharma is an author who wrote a book called The Leader Who Had No Title. Even for that title, you know, you can be a leader without that title. Though we all clamor for titles, uh, we need to lead without necessarily having that title. Okay? Revolutionary leadership model. And this means we create an environment 
and a culture where everyone needs to show leadership, everyone drives innovation, everyone inspires teammates, everyone embraces change, everyone takes responsibility for results, everyone leads through positive thinking, and everyone devotes to expressing their own absolute best. And this is my clarion call to you leaders, that you should be that everyone who shows leadership wherever you are, regardless of whether you are called the head or uh, you are a member of the team somewhere, you need to show leadership, self-leadership. You need to be that person who drives innovation. Even if you are employed, you need to drive innovation there. Don't just work for the pay. No, you are a leader. Drive innovation. Be that everyone that inspires the team. Be the life of that team. That at a time when things are looking dull, you can bring everybody, make everyone be inspired and they work better. Be that everyone that embraces change, resisting change will only slow down things. But embrace change. If there is need for you to adjust, adjust, but embrace change and move on. Be that everyone who takes responsibility for results. Be that everyone who leads through positive thinking and eventually be everyone, be that everyone who devotes to expressing the absolute best. Do your best. Don't look at the paycheck. No, do more than you can be paid for because you are a leader. Hallelujah. Oh my, I'm alone. Amen. And today is, <laughs> thank you, Victor. Thank you. If we had the turn of you in this church, we would go far. So yes. in today's leadership challenge, evaluate yourself leadership based on the self-leadership qualities and identify areas that you can develop. For you to be self-aware, we said you need to know your weaknesses, your strengths, your abilities. Now here we are looking at where are you weak? That then you can develop it. Because being weak in one area does not mean the end of the army, but you can develop it. Some of the things that you cannot develop when you are in a team, you get somebody else who is stronger in that area to take that role. And uh, I think you can just put your, put your take-homes on the chat as we conclude. So those are the, we, we, that's lesson eight on development phases, which we have gone through. I will briefly look at the chat before I call in, uh, before I call in chairman to conclude. Mm -hmm. Oh, Uni says she can't hear anything. I don't know whether now she's able to hear, but we are concluding. So what's your take home? I'm not seeing anything else on the chat. Just put one thing that you have learned today. One thing that you say now I've learned this. Yes, Eric says self-leadership is the foundation of transformation leader, of a transformational leader to be a purpose-driven leader was given data. One more comment and then hand it over to chairman. Now, as we are waiting for that one, uh, the antidote for fear is action. Correct, correct, yes. correct. Chairman said something in his opening remarks and mentioned of somebody who has been successful uh, because he applied some of the things that we learned here. And uh, I, I hope we can have him um, on the sixth. Uh, he's a good gentleman. I want you people to meet him. It's very simple, but when he talks of the things that he applied as you are learning here and the success that God has given him, you, you see for sure, uh, it's not child play that we are doing here, but it's something that is good for life. Let me clear with uh, this, not this chat. Pastor Isabella says self-awareness, self-confidence, and self-efficacy. Believe that you can do it. And the Bible says you can do all things 
Victor says leadership requires self-development. Yes. You need to develop yourself. Develop yourself, get skills, get knowledge. Mark, um, there is this um, uh, painter, uh, he's called uh, Macangelo. And he, at the age of 86, he said he was still learning. He said, I'm still learning. So self-development, you need to develop yourself even at the age that others think like you should be. You're about to expire. Remember, humans have no expiry dates stuck on them. That's why you don't know when you're going to expire. So you have to be a leader to the very last end. Thank you very much. That was our time. Karibu Chairman, as you conclude it. Uh, thank you, Reverend. Uh, let's appreciate Reverend with the digital club. Uh, yeah, our time is well spent. Uh, and I just want us to close there. But I want to say, let's embrace ambidextrous leadership and ambidextrous living. So as we take care of the short term issues, please let's also remember the long term. Uh, issues. So that means you need to project your vision uh, and have that balance. And then uh, remember, we have looked at the stories uh, of uh, Mother Teresa, uh, Nelson Mandela, uh, Martin Luther Jr. And these are stories that will be read for a long time to come. Uh, Uni said we have not met them, but we have met them in books and also in uh, other resources. So in, when we were starting, we talked about the greatest story ever told. And that story has not yet been written. It has not yet been told. And that story is for you, Victor, for you, Eric, for you, Pastor Isabella, and for you, Eunice. This is our chance to be able to write that story that one day people will be able to reflect and read the story that will inspire them to do more in life. Because these are people that are inspiring us to want to do more, to lead more, to lead more sacrificially, to lead, to lead more with conviction, and even to want to sacrifice more for the good of all. So I challenge all of us, let's keep on deepening these things in our hearts. Uh, transformation only happens uh, when there is a conversion of attitude and there is a revelation, revelation on what we have learned. That's our prayer that the information you are getting here will uh, trickle down to become a revelation. And uh, our, our thinking also will continue being transformed as we get more information, we'll become better and better leaders. Otherwise, thank you so much. I know we have spent uh, more time today. I just want to conclude by noting that uh, a message was shared about the t-shirts. Uh, so I hope all of us uh, were able to respond back to Edith who is coordinating that exercise by sending you a, a size of the t-shirt and also the amount, which is 700. Uh, please, if you have not done so, uh, do that. We are closing that uh, by 25th of this month. Uh, secondly, we are still planning for our retreat on 6th. And uh, I think almost all of you will be getting presents on uh, gifts on that day based on our challenges. Uh, next week, we'll be having other challenges also running on. So please, if you haven't registered, I know Eric has registered, Pastor Isabella, uh, Eunice uh, has also registered. Victor, I'm not sure, I haven't seen uh, your name in the registration. Uh, so if there is any challenge on your side, uh, please let me know uh, so that uh, we can be able to uh, bring that to a closure also. Uh, thank you so much and let's keep on going. Let's keep on building our resilience uh, despite a few challenges here and there. Our spirit is the spirit of resilience. Well, the most resilient uh, uh, human, human beings are the most resilient being. We can go through all sorts of challenges. With willingness to stretch, we can always stretch. We, we, can only, we can always bounce back. So we trust that this far we have come, we're going to uh, with the strength and uh, focus to the very end. So we'll share more updates uh, next week. Next week, will be, there'll be a, a more another part of the program that will be kicking on. 
but we'll share with you, with you that on Thursday. Let's pause there. And I just want to uh, stop there unless there is any clarification, any question uh, that you may want uh, to ask and uh, just get some clarification. Uh, Victor, is, are you okay? I was, is there any clarification or any comment? I'm okay. Okay, thank you so much, Victor. Eric, you're good? I'm, I'm okay. But... Okay. I'm okay. But I've been having a... Okay, yes, Victor. Okay, I've been... Uh, I've been having a little challenge on submitting my, my weekly... Uh -huh. My weekly, is it weekly test or what? The summary, the summaries. Book review book summary. Yeah, uh -huh. the summaries, the book summary review. Okay. Because the link has not been opening up. Okay, I'll, I'll uh, say. So if there is any problem or changes, you can inform. Okay, it's okay. I'll get in touch with you immediately after this so that we can uh, be able to address that. I think Eric, you said you are okay. Uh, Pastor Isabella, are you okay? Yes, I'm okay. So I kept on going out the door, but I'm okay now. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, Eunice, are you good? Okay, I think. Uh, okay. we, uh, thank you so much, Eunice. Uh, we can unmute and uh, share the words of grace together. We can. Uh, Mute. Okay, so at your own pace, uh, let's uh, just uh, share the words of grace uh, together and may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love, and the love, and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. Have a blessed night, everyone, and God bless you so much. Thank mm -hmm. you.